today we're going to make a one pot miso soup and this is the kind of soup that you can make on those nights that you do not want to cook. You know, those nights when you come back at the end of the day and you're knackered and you just want to flop on the sofa and you want to grab the rice cakes and the hummus and a packet of crisps and that's done. You get everything that you need in a meal in one bowl, really simple. You can use whatever you've got in the house and the fridge and it's just really easy to do. Also, the actual act of cooking it really helps to slow you down and bring you back to your body and into the moment and can really transform how you feel that evening. So many nights I've come back after a really busy day and I've picked my daughter up from school and I'm absolutely knackered and all I want to do is just completely flop and not do anything. At the same time, I want to feed myself something nourishing. So sometimes I force myself back into the kitchen and I will make this soup. And just from the cutting of the veg to the cooking of the soup, there's something about that 35 minutes that it takes to do all of that that I notice that I feel so much better afterwards. I feel more nourished and much more grounded for the rest of the evening. So as you can see, I'm starting off with some leeks, but I'm separating the whites of the leeks from the dark greens of the leeks. And I'm doing that on purpose because the dark greens will cook at a different time as the whites. So I'm gonna add the dark green parts at the end so that we get that lovely fresh green color. And I'm gonna use the whites of the leeks almost like the same time that I would use the onions and sweat them and use that as a sort of foundation of the soup. I've also got some carrots, which I've cut into half moons as well. I've got some onions, I've got this really beautiful rainbow chard, I've got this really lovely candied beetroot, and some radicchio and some bean sprouts. The absolute winner about this soup is that you can use anything. I mean, I'm, I really mean it. Every time I make this soup, it's a different variation. I just use whatever I've got. These are the veg I'm using today, and I'm going to use these lovely spelt noodles, which I've cooked already. They just were boiling for six minutes, and that's it. I'm also going to use these really lovely white beans. These ones are really my favorite, just because when they're in the glass jar, there's I don't know what it is, they're just so much softer and creamier inside. I made this earlier and I almost always will have some stock in my freezer or in my fridge that I've made before. Now if you don't have stock and you come home and you want to make this soup, you can just use water. It's absolutely fine. First we want to heat up some oil so we can fry our onions and the whites of our leeks. I tend to use an organic sesame oil. Of course you can use whatever oil you want. All I would say is just make sure that the oil that you do use is really good quality. And then I'm gonna add my onions. After I've added my onions, I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. There are two ways to really use salt in cooking. One way is to make your food salty. And then the other way is to use the salt to really help to transform the food to help with the cooking process. I've just added the salt to the onions here and what that's going to do is that it's, it's starting to draw out all the wonderful natural juices and the flavour from the onions. Now I'm going to add the whites of my leeks. Just give that a good mix. Then I'm going to add my carrots and after that dark greens of the leeks. There's quite a lot of veg in the pot, so I'm gonna add one more pinch of salt to help bring out all the flavor and the juices from the carrots and the leeks. What I'm doing here now is I'm just sort of leaving the veg to sweat. I don't really have to do that much. I'm gonna turn it down to sort of medium to low heat, then I'm gonna put the lid on. And then I can just breathe. <laughs> Actually, there's something really calming about just sort of letting the veg sweat in the pot and not having much to do and just sort of standing here and, and just coming back to the moment. 
So it's the actual cooking of the soup that can help us just as much as the eating of it. So I would think that the carrots and the leeks are, are ready now. Yeah, they are. They're beautiful. They've all sweated and really lovely and soft. So I'm going to add the dark greens of my leeks now. And now I'm going to add my stock. So the good thing about this soup is that once it's done, it can you'll have leftovers for two or three days. Sometimes I even have it for breakfast the next day. It's really delicious breakfast. So I'm just going to turn the heat up now and let that stock and everything in here to start, start simmering. I'm going to add my beans now. Ah, there we go. <laughs> if you don't have beans, you can add anything you want. You can add tofu, you can add chickpeas. I use different ingredients in the spring. I probably use more peas and, and spring greens. Make sure everything's mixed up. I'm going to put the lid back on so that that can come to a higher heat. So this has been simmering now for about five to seven minutes, um, and I think it's probably nearly done. Oh, so, so yummy. So now we just need to finish it off. So I'm just gonna turn that down to a lower heat. So I'm gonna add my rainbow chard stalks here. Sprinkle them in. Now I'm going to add my rainbow chard leaves as well, which really don't need much, maybe one, one or two minutes. Everything we need is here. You know, we've got our protein, we're going to have our, our carbs from our noodles or rice or grain or whatever you're using. Plenty and plenty of veg. Really loving meal to make for ourselves. Now we're going to add our miso. So one tip about cooking with miso. You never, ever, ever boil your miso. You wait till the soup is ready or the meal is ready, and then we want to turn it off or have it on a very, very low heat so that it's not boiling. And that's when we add our miso. So miso is an incredible food. It's so nutritious. It's a fermented soybean made with a grain. This one is brown rice miso really amazing for strengthening our immune system. I mean, I always pull out the miso soup whenever anybody in my family is feeling run down or my daughter has a bit of a cold coming on or, or even if I'm just really overworked and really tired. You may have seen in the shops they've got white, sweet white miso and then they've got dark miso. The difference is, is really um, how long each one has been fermented for. So this one, um, sometimes the dark misos could have been fermented for as long as 20 years, which is kind of amazing. Sitting in a barrel in Japan, fermenting away, just becoming so alive and so vibrant and so nutritious. So I've turned the heat down. Actually, I'm going to turn it off. And now we're going to dissolve the miso in a separate bowl. We'll just take out some of the broth into a separate bowl here. There's probably enough there for about five servings. Use a couple tablespoons. This is a surabachi, by the way, if anyone hasn't seen one before. This is a Japanese pestle and mortar. It has these lovely little ridges around the side. Make sure as much of it is dissolved as you can. Now, one thing about miso is once you've made your miso soup, you can reheat it if you want to eat some more the next day, but just make sure you don't bring it to a boil. We can add this into our soup. Last thing is I'm just going to add just a, a touch of tamari in here, probably about a, a tablespoon, not very much for such a big pot of soup, just to sort of fine finish off that seasoning of it, get it, give it a bit more depth. One last thing now that everything's done is I'm going to add just a small drizzle of toasted sesame oil on top. So let's serve up. So we've got these Lovely noodles that I'm using. These are spelt noodles. These are 100% spelt. Put in a wonderful soup on top. Bean sprouts on top here. Candied beetroot slices. Radicchio leaves, just for that bitter freshness. If you're like me, you want to add a bit of fire, a bit of heat, you can add some chili. And that's that. You've got your one pot miso soup, pure love, pure nourishment and really delicious.